What's up, Skid Kids? So it's um, another day. Uh, something cool came in the mail today, and uh, it's one of the three most important things about a drift car, differential, suspension, and bucket seat. That's my three important things. I don't think you need more power. But uh, what came in the mail was uh, BC-type BR coilovers that I ordered about a week ago. And uh, funny stories is I actually didn't even order the BCs. Uh, my uh, Basically what happens, I ordered uh, Megan V2s, which is another coilover for the 8.6 that comes with spindles. And they're about $1,200 or so, and uh, which is, of course, a lot of cash. And um, But uh, basically, a couple days after I ordered them, Kevin from Njuku called me and said, Hey, your Megans are out of stock. Uh, we don't have an ETA when they'll be available again. But they were nice enough, and they actually hooked me up with the BCs, which are almost $1,500 if you order them from BC themselves. And they gave me, they didn't charge me at all any extra. They just, they wrote me off for the rest of it. So I'll have Kevin's little email in the bottom of the description. He's awesome. If you go through Njuku for anything, make sure you contact him. He's just a great guy. I've talked to him a couple times. He's helped me out a bunch. So anyways, we're going to throw on the front coilovers tonight and hopefully the rears tomorrow. Because June 5th, today is the first, is Midvale again. I'm going to try and get the 8.6 there. We're going to try and make it on the track this time. So uh, hopefully they don't cancel it because I heard if they don't get 15 drivers, then they're going to cancel it. And there are only five right now, but it's the first. So uh, I might prepay tonight and just say, screw it. If I don't go, I don't go. So uh, yeah, let's get started, guys. Alright, so um, we're throwing the coilers on. I've actually taken off the brake caliper and the bracket already. I just gotta pop off this cover and take off the rotor and then we'll be ready to uh, remove the strut from uh, its uh, three bolts up top and it's just uh, two on the bottom of this car instead of one big one like other cars. <laughs> So one thing I forgot on the other side was actually to take this off first because you do need this bracket for the uh, brake caliper for the brake pads that has a bracket for itself. So uh, after you get your dust shield off, uh, you'll be able to get uh, more clearance to these two 17mm uh, nuts. I'm sorry, the 17mm bolts, there's one here on the side of the strut. There's also another one on this side of the strut which connects to the, your tie rod, which is what I have the caliper hanging from. And this is your uh, control, these are your roll center uh, adjusters I believe. Not too sure exactly what they are, I know you can get aftermarket ones for a more negative camber. But uh, these are next, and then the three uh, 12 meter bolts up top is uh, the last step. Alright, so next is these uh, 12 millimeter nuts on the top of your strut. Ok, 
Okay, now that you've got um, both these two uh, bolts out and the three nuts up top, what I usually do is grab the pry bar or a crowbar, and I usually find a place to stick it to uh, force this down because this right here actually separates. So you need to separate that so the strut can come out and down so it can fall out of place. All right, now that I got the strut out, I'm actually gonna paint a lot of this in here just to clean it up and uh, make it look better. Since I'm gonna be running a bumper, you'll probably be able to see inside there. All right, now that the paint's dry, I'm gonna uh, get the new coil and uh, roll center adjuster and uh, thrower in. It's pretty simple, just uh, repeat the process of taking the old strut out. The only difference is um, on the bottom of the strut, do you remember I took out, uh, they were two 17 millimeter bolts like this. Well, on the new coilover, it actually is converted to a, and it's a separate piece, and I'll show you that in a minute, but it's actually converted to a 10 millimeter Allen key with extended bolts. And I'll show you the reason for the extended bolts here in a second. All right, so uh, they give you this, uh, these extended bolts in this piece here because let's take this out here. So you got these two extended bolts and they give you this piece. And you're like, well, what is this piece? Does it replace this piece? No, it actually just simply sits on top and then your uh, new coilover simply just gets on top of this. So the extended bolts go through both your uh, tie rod end, your uh, spacer and and then threads into the bottom of the coilover. And you say, why is this? This is because the factory strut over there is actually a lot longer than the coilover. The coilover is physically shorter, so they have to make up that space, otherwise the control arm would actually would be at a weird angle. So they give you a spacer to make up the space, which is actually kind of nice. I didn't expect them to throw that in, so that is nice of a feature for BCs. I'm not sure if the Megans throw that in or not, but uh, definitely if you got the money, just get the BCs. They're amazing. They're, they're jewels. So throw the new coil over in, and uh, we'll get ready. All right, now that we got uh, the coilover in, we're gonna throw on this uh, brake pad bracket that I, I painted up real quick while the camera was charging. And that's these four bolts right here. I did forget it on the other side, so I, I spent more time probably taking stuff back apart and uh, trying to get that loose. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty big pain in the ass, but it can be done. So uh, I suggest leaving the old strut on the car first and breaking it loose like I did uh, a couple minutes ago, probably you've seen it in the video. So I'll throw this bracket on and then we'll be ready to throw the rotor and the pads and all the bearings on. And then this side, or this front, the whole front will be done. So before you put your rotor on, uh, make sure that you uh, grease up your spindle. I just use multi-service grease that you can buy basically anywhere. Just cover it up, put, uh, try and smash it down on the bearings. Just as, can't have too much, it doesn't hurt. So, and then you'll be ready to slide your, uh, your bearing back on the new spindles and uh, put it all back together. All 
Alright, so we got the spacer on, the caliper, caliper bracket, coilover, brake line, everything's tied down and tightened down. Uh, painted the inside here up front. And uh, that's everything for the uh, for the front. Looks pretty good. Painted this side too. The only thing I forgot to paint on this side was that brake pad bracket. No big deal. So yeah guys, now we're going to move on to uh, the rears. Probably going to flip the car around, I think it's easier. And uh, we'll get to see it nice and low on the front. Alright guys, so I've uh, not turned the car around, but I've uh, put the front down and uh, jacked up the, the rear. And uh, before I get to the coilover though, I want to finish this rust. I honestly don't think I'm going to make a video on rust repair because there's a lot of videos on YouTube of rust repair and it's all the same. And to be honest, this car is rusty and I honestly is just like hacking it together just so I can get, um, just, I, I can get it to drive just because, uh, I'm honestly just tired of like waiting around and just like being worried about rust now. It just landed on the transmission that hurt. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna like patch this rust up just so it's strong enough. I don't care what it looks like. Throw some paint on it so it doesn't rust anymore. And uh, what my new plan is, honestly, is I'm just gonna be getting a new shell here a couple years down the road, hopefully in theory, and then swap whatever parts I have on this shell and uh, swap it over to a clean shell. And uh, maybe by then I'll have another missile car to kind of toss around. Um. So first what I'm gonna do though is uh, remove this shock so I can get more over here, so I can patch more. And then uh, I'm gonna work on removing the spring. And then uh, I'll work on this area, this whole side first, and then do the coilover on this side, and then completely do the other side by itself also. So yeah, I'm gonna start just grinding away and taking off the shock and just uh, going with the flow. I've honestly never taken any of this apart, so I have no idea how it goes, but it uh, should be pretty simple. Alright guys, so it's the uh, next night, burning the midnight oil a little bit to get this thing done and ready for the drift event on Sunday. So uh, what I've done off camera is fix the rest of the rust in the strut towers. It's going to be good enough for this shell just to get it strong. Um, and now I'm currently throwing on the rear coilovers so we can actually lower this thing and get it stiff so it might actually slide. So uh, let's throw the rear coilovers on and see how she sits guys. Before I throw the rear coilovers in though, I am going to paint this trunk area just because I probably won't have another chance to paint it and uh, I won't have to paint over the, the new coilovers. So uh, just something to do and make it look a little bit cleaner back here.
All right guys, so the coilovers are fully installed. I'm about to lower it down to see where she sits. And uh, I actually have not adjusted anything at all so far. And uh, BC actually set up my uh, ride height pretty good. They, they guessed pretty good. So uh, I'm just gonna take the jack stands off. We're gonna see how low it really is. Okay, so currently this thing is freaking dumped on its ass. I can't even tell. I don't think it's even level. It might be actually. The back sits down a little bit. So I have to adjust it just a tad. Spring rate seems okay though. This looks dumped. Plus this tire is kind of flat. But uh, this car feels so tiny now. Sorry about the music. Oh, I'm so close to the ground. This is awesome though. I feel... It feels pretty stiff. It feels good. I'm going to take it for a quick spin around the block and then I'm going to explain more of it in the morning. Maybe after I adjust it a little bit. All right guys, so it's uh, actually not the next morning, it's actually a, a few weeks, because I actually have the uh, R32. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys where the car's sitting right now, the height of it. And uh, I also had the camper plates fully maxed out for the maximum JDM this. No, I'm just kidding. Just for a good turn in, as you can tell, it's got some pretty good camber to it. Probably about close to four degrees, that would be a good guess. And then the back, I just have a stock S13 Dandelions with a uh, one inch spacer and they don't look too bad. There are 15s and the fronts are 14 so it does look a little awkward with the height but uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's good for drifting just because these tires on the back are nice and skinny and they're nice and pumped up with pressure. Uh, what else changed? Not much, just got the Skyline steering wheel on here because they put the Nardi on the Skyline but we'll get to that in another video. Just wanted to show you guys uh, the height of what I'm running at and just uh, yeah so I'm uh, going to move on to the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's going to be a beast on the track. I've already gone once, so hopefully that footage will be out soon. So uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for subscribing and liking and watching. Uh, it means a lot to me.